Let's get down to the real business of taking care of the people. We can't have a testimony without a test. And we are being tested whether we have courage enough, conviction enough, people power enough to stand up and do what is right for ourselves and generations yet unborn. Come on. I'm here with the amazing Danny Glover, actor, activist, director, and icon. Some people know him as Mr. From the Color Purple, and others know him as Mr. Lethal Weapon himself. <laughs> Mr. Danny Glover, welcome to the Nina Turner Show on The Real News Network. Well, I'm glad to be on. So on, glad to have you here. It's good to be here, Nina, on the, you know, with all the hyperbola, I'm still glad to be here. It's all true. When you got it, you got to embrace it. You do. And speaking of embrace, you've been doing this for a very long time. Why do you do what you do, especially in your position? One of my positions has been constant ever since I took my first breath. Mm. And that's I'm a citizen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I, there are all the things that bring you to this point in life or where you are throughout life. It's not just didn't start yesterday and it didn't start just when I decided I decided I want to become an actor. It's being, it's the investment and, and having something articulated through through movements, mm -hmm. articulated through through me, to me, through movements, you know. My parents were post employees, strong, uh, staunch advocates of union, involved yeah. in their union, their local union, the, the uh, they national were NAACP, post, weren't they? You know, and, and they were involved yeah. in, in members of the NAACP, but they're yeah. members of the the National Alliance of Post Employees. Mm -hmm. You know, and and where you saw just at the point of the civil rights movement, this is the civil rights movement began to kind of find ground and find leverage. African Americans have, were were we're dominating the postal service, mm -hmm. you know. I can go to any, I can go to Cincinnati. I can go to Rio Plata. Where are you I, going? Yeah, I'm going. Yeah. I can go to Chicago, in Philadelphia, any place. And the first time I ask, raise your hand. See, and which one of your parents, grandparents, or uncles or aunts were, were at the post office mm -hmm. and the hands would fly up. But those government jobs were really the entree for, Afri for many African Americans into the middle class. Absolutely. The entree, yeah. our parents became homeowners, yes. you know, when it was really affordable in mm -hmm. San Francisco to become a homeowner. All those things, I think, were the, the things that were calculated in my life and were, were the foundation of how I begin to see the world. But what know? makes you do what you do? I mean, some people, there's a sac is there a sacrifice? Are there, there are risks that you take? You take hard stances on certain issues that may rub people the wrong way. Have you ever had to suffer a consequence within your career for being so outspoken for justice? I, I don't think about that, you know, because the career, the business itself is, is subjective in certain ways, mm -hmm. you know, that each, each actor, actress has their own journey, particular journey, yeah. you know, and some of that has, has to do with what is, they can, what is considered the talent they have, and some of that has to do with a number of other things. Uh, and I've, you know, from the very first moment that I decided to be, that I, first came on stage, mm -hmm. it was during the black arts movement. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about 50 years ago. Yeah. That's the first time I stepped on stage. I, have, I was 20 years old and never stepped on stage in my life. The idea that the work in the black, that, that moment, black arts movement, was connected to the work of freedom singers in the South. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a and the, the black theater, or black theater in New York, mm -hmm. the Negro theater uh, 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 company in New York, all of those particular things. So I'm part of a legacy. That's the first thing you understand. Yes. You're part of a continuum. You're part of a continuum of ideas, you know, of people who are using art as an expression of their own humanity mm -hmm. and using that art not only for their own transformation, but the transformation of their community and society. And to critique a and, society, and, exactly. right? Exactly, and to critique to society. It. So, but speaking of your journey, though, in 2016, you decided to endorse the Democratic Socialists from Vermont. Uh -huh. 
Senator Bernie Sanders. And I think you really talked about him as being the person that could really go up against a corrupt system that was really leaving working class and poor people behind. I've been an active citizen ever since I saw my parents organize for justice. Today, I see a broken system that's not up to the task of fulfilling the promise of America. I've joined the Bernie Sanders campaign for economic and social justice because he's trustworthy, boldly courageous, and incorruptible. What made you support him? We have to deal with, I think in a moment, and I'm not the first one to say this, mm -hmm. the battle of ideas. Mm -hmm. What are the ideas, you know? If we want a really fundamental change, what are the ideas that bring that about? Whose side are you on? Who's that? Whose side are you on, boy? Whose side, whose side are you on? And, and I felt that Bernie Sanders was on the side of working people. He was on the side of those who were less fortunate. He was on the side of those who were disenfranchised. He was on the side of them. And his messages, whether it was young or whether it was millennials or whether it's uh, baby boomers like me Season or whatever, folks. in between, everything in between yeah. was connected to that. And so uh, I remember on the, because uh, I've heard about Bernie Sanders, I had met him before, mm -hmm. but I had a great deal, a great deal about him doing Jesse Jackson's campaign. One of very, very few whites well, elected few, officials uh, thank to Thank you, endorse elected yeah. endorsing all this. Say, well, look here, there. And he tells the truth. He doesn't owe anyone anything. Right. But and, he didn't, and, but he didn't. So the ideas, do his ideas idea. still permeate? Because what are your thoughts about the, the current status of, of the Democratic Party and where that party should and could go into the future? Well, I, I think on the one hand, so many people have pontificated the current status of, mm -hmm. of the Democratic Party. Do we need party. a third party? Yeah. I, I'm not so sure. I think that we may come to that point that we need a third party. Mm -hmm. I think it's possible in the, in the, the, at this period to use this Democratic Party. And if, if we determine that there's a third party, then certainly those constituencies, those citizens feeling that they no longer can be represented or it's not a possibility to be represented or we need another angle in which we to look at, we need another voice within that, then that, that is, the, I think that's important. Mm -hmm. But right now, I think we have to use what has developed in this moment. People didn't necessarily, people came to the Democratic Party with Bernie Sanders on there. Mm -hmm. So there, there is, and there's always been a left on the Democratic Party. Right. You were in Philly. Huh? I was you, in You Philly. were in Philly, I and in... Uh, I just recently saw an interview that you and Paul Jay did. Had no idea. It really brought tears to my eyes, but I'm told that you were in the chair, you were about to interview with The Real News, and you get a call saying, Nina needs, needs our help. We got to go. And you, you told Paul Jay, I got to go. My sister needs my help. And so you're in the car, and you and Paul Jay are interviewing, and you don't quite know what is going on, but you yeah. know that something is wrong. Something's wrong, yeah. Yeah. We're going to a press conference, which is about Nina Turner. The Clinton camp doesn't seem to be all that concerned about unity or appeasing the Sanders camp. Or, or even appeasing those who people are speaking on behalf of those people on the outside, the homeless people I see around here in Philadelphia itself, and, and all those who are, are in need of the Democratic Party, who relied on the Sanders campaign as a voice for them, for them who were without a voice. So I, I think you, 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 the point is, is that it's what Bernie's campaign has done, what the Senators' campaign has done, is expanded the body politics, expanded the, the, the involvement of young people, et cetera. For the, for the Clintons, their idea of this whole thing and the Clinton campaign and everything else, all I do is get over it. You young people, get over it. Because How was that moment, not just about I'm with Nina, but I really believe that that was a pulse of the people who have who felt forgotten during that convention well, process. Well, that, that's, that's, that's what I think in some sense. And I think wh whatever, whether we're in Canton, Mississippi, or we're in Philadelphia, those people yeah. who were on the outside of the convention, yes. you know, I don't think Bernie Sanders and whatever compromises he made and had to make in order to make whatever make this thing flow as if it, he never was any inclusive in the process. Mm -hmm. He was always on the outside of this. And that's the problem with what has happened at that particular moment. 
And, and whether we can argue many points about whether we, this campaign of Bernie Sanders was either expected to go or was expected to have the kind of uh, uh, resonance that it did, or we can say, you know, that it, it was forecasted. People, people out there, because they're upset, they're upset. What they're going to do is they're going to find some sort of way in which to express that upset, uh, the way in which they're upset about things. And they found that Bernie Sanders became, at that moment, the catalyst for them to express that. And, and you, could, you could see this even possibly some of those people who voted for Trump were people who were potentially yes. the, uh, could have voted for, for Sanders at well, any point Well, we know that a lot of them did. I mean, yeah. so many folks that voted for President Obama both times yeah. ended up voting for Mr. Trump. Mr. Even Trump. in my home state, 70%, he won 70% of the vote in 30 counties in yeah. the great state of Ohio. Wow. So yeah. people are hurting. They're looking for something. As someone once said to me, they, they want, they want, uh, uh, they want genuineness regardless of even if it might be hurtful. And that's what he brought. Right. He brought to that. Yeah. You know, he, he brought that in his demeanor. Mm -hmm. He brought that in his message. Yeah. He brought that in a way in which he was to able to, through the campaign, hear the issues around mass incarceration, mm -hmm. you know, he can hear the issues around Black Lives Matters. He can hear issues that that he didn't just throw under the rug, you know, but it brought him to he can hear the issues of LGBTQ. All of those things were on the table right now. And I think Bernie Sanders presence there allowed for a dialogue that would not have been there, without you know, him. without them. Would but not where have do been we there. go from here? I mean, we had the Women's March. We have a lot of people protesting in the streets. I believe protest is good, but we need somebody doing the planning. Well, if you were this, encouraging... This, if, if I wasn't here... Yeah, if you had to tell folks, where say, do we... What do we do? What, what do yeah. we... Because part of resistance is the idea of what you want, what you expect, how you envision. Dr. King talked about the dream. Yeah. When he talked about the dream, he was just not sitting laying in bed dreaming about it. He's talking about the dream as a facilitating yeah. the possibilities of who we can be. Right. And who how can we transform ourselves? What are the moral, what are the ethical parameters of, of foundation in which we build mm -hmm. a new world? You know, mm -hmm. how do we look at climate change and everything else? How do we look at population? How do we look at war itself? Right. War and the, and the ensuing refugee crisis. So we have these crises, but we have these opportunities to shape a world. So you believe and that I, there's promise in the problem? I, I, I think, I don't know if it's promise in the problem, but I know there's promise in our addressing and uh, understanding that we are, not, we are the problem itself. We have to do what we have to do as citizens in order to have the possibility of changing the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, there's many obstacles. You know, we all know that 50% of the wealth in this world is controlled by who? Corporations. Right. Who make money off of war who make money off of various other, the kind of, the kind of instability that happens, the, the exploitation that happens with workers and people. There's money to be made off of that. There's profits that have been made. We're in a situation, wherever we are, whether it's in this country or whether it's around the world, it's a race to the bottom. Now, why is that? Why haven't we been able, after all this extraordinary moments in the 20th century, we have historic, historic moments in the 20th century, right. from the labor rights movement, women's rights movement, all these things and everything, we we'll keep pushing the envelope right now. Why have we been, not been able to co overcome the, this, this, next, this next stage? Mm -hmm. Could it be, could it be that the system, the economic system it, it functions in, in some ways that we function in, is a system in which, in which it, in a sense, entices us to remain engaged, entices us to believe that there are possibilities in it. When ultimately, we know that the system itself is the main reason why we have the planet crisis. That we it's say. rigged, it, it, right? It, I mean, it, it is rigged. It, it, it's, it's rigged, but the, uh, rigged from the standpoint, but the things that happen around us, the things that we accept, all those things that we accept, all the ideas that we accept, and, and this is, I'm not trying to be it's an instant esoteric and everything, but the ideas, what are the ideas around the world we want to build? Mm -hmm. You know, then what does it look like? We talk about other places in the world, yes. Hugo Chavez and, and, just and Venezuela. just got back from Venezuela. Venezuela. How do you connect the struggle of 
the diaspora, you talk a lot about the diaspora. Yeah, yes, yes. The connection between our, our, our black sisters and brothers in Venezuela or in Haiti, just the whole pan-Africanism. You talk a lot about that and that is actually loss. You just got back from Venezuela. How do you see that nexus and can brown and black people all over the world come together in a strong way? I, it's impossible that they can. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, they have to come together in a sense. Do you we know? know that though? And I think we do. I think, that, 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 and not to simplify anything, because there's no simple, uncomplicated situations mm -hmm. that we be in, in realities. Realities are complicated in a yes. way. So where do, we, where do we define, and when I define the critical issue around the world through its main, the main engine, engine which dictates what happens in the world, the system of capitalism is race. Mm -hmm. If we, look at, if we look at the issues around migration, immigration, if we look at the issues around destabilization, if we look at the issues that are created by those de uh, de destabilization, we look at the bottom of its race. But yeah. is there any way to deal? I mean, we live in a capitalistic society. It's not going to change in America. Is there any way, do you think, to make the system better for people because I, I don't know about you, but I've never met anybody who said, when I grow up, I want to be poor. I want to be on the system. Well, but people treat poor people as if this is something that they envisioned for themselves. And, and I think our first test is where do we begin to elect progressives who don't, who are not bought off by the system and begin to institute not only the policies that would change domestically the relationship that we have to capital, mm -hmm. the relationship that we have to corp corporation, where do we begin to elect them in the sense who are out, out there lobbying on our behalf, not on, on the system's behalf. But you uh, just hit the nail on the head. You know, and is that possible? I, the... I, we have to believe it's possible, Nina. I mean, so, right, right, now, right now, in the midst of what's come, we have to raise the bar of our own expectations. You know, power tends to diminish our expectations of ourselves, mm -hmm. our expectations, and but we have to raise the bar on our expectations. And we have to be better citizens. We have to hold people accountable. Well, when you say better, do you mean informed? Informed, mean... informed citizens mm -hmm. and active citizens. Not on elective day, but we have to be able to say, I want to know who the dog catcher is. You understand what I'm saying? We, we, they looked at a young mayor in Berkeley, California, Berkeley County, 32 year old, yes. Hispanic mayor. You know, we have to be, I'm, I'm going to do something Friday for Mayor Downing, a, a congressional mm -hmm. uh, um, a candidate in Los Angeles. So all those particular things that we, we have to see. So if we people have to push are not in. running for office themselves, they need to find a candidate or a cause that they can believe in. We can't sit on the sidelines. Well, I mean, if, no, you could, no on the sidelines. if you could say to not just millennials, but anybody that has a consciousness who really feels as though the system is against them and that there is no hope, whether they don't like the fact that Mr. Trump is now president or whether they believe that the Democrats rigged the primary, mm -hmm. there are lots of people who feel as though that this thing is never going to be fixed. What would you say, if you had to tell them three things that they could do or three things to believe and to hope for as we move forward as a nation, what would those things be? I, I mean, if, if I were to name one, yeah. I, I'd, be, be, I'd have to say, ask them to be involved in electoral politics. Whether, but my vote doesn't count. Huh? My vote doesn't count, and I don't vote, Mr. Glover, because my vote doesn't count. No, 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 no. That's, that's unacceptable. That's, that's well, another, my life hasn't changed at well, all. Well, I've well, been voting well, for these our people. Our life may not change directly. What we have to say, and what do we mean by life change? Does life change means that we have more troyers and tinkers to play with? Of life change means that we feel that... I'm living in a better world. There has to be some place where you feel that you live around. Right. There has to be a new sociology. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. There have to be a new pedagogical approach yeah. to where we going and what we're doing. How do we get that? Not just with the people who should. You're right. Expect more, but also the types of people that we will elect to office. Well, we expect more out of them as yeah. well. And and do and, we and, not elect people if somebody doesn't perform? 
Danny, is it, is, it, is it right to say, you know what, you don't get another chance. We're voting you out. We're not going to vote for you next time. Well, I, huh? I mean, that, that, that could be in some cases. Okay. I mean, that, those things can happen in some cases. You know, we, we have to understand that we're right now, that we could become not the Trump card, but we could become the... the <laughs> Please, the, the, not the Trump card. <laughs> we could become the most <laughs> instrumental. We could... We, I believe in this, this project, this project of humanity. Mm. You know, it, it, and we've wa we watched it go a lot of ways, but, you know, we have to believe in it that we and ourselves, we right here are capable of not only imagining a, what our best interest could be, but also acting on that. You believe we can make it happen? I believe we can make it happen. Okay. We're going to end on those possibilities, and we are so glad that we have you in that space. Thank oh. you so much for joining oh, me. Oh, you I, are the man. I know, baby. I'm okay. Yes, you are a lethal I'm weapon for justice. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us for the Nina Turner Show on the Real News Network.